Hello everybody, welcome to the Redmen TV. We are back. It's the Liverpool Development Watch. My name is Ben Kelly and my job is to bring you updates on the loans and youth sides associated with Liverpool Football Club. Without further ado, we will get right into that. Later on in the show, we're going to be talking about Marco Grujic and how much everybody at Cardiff really, really loves him. But first, we're going to start with Ryan Kent. Um, who seems to be starting to fall out of favour at Bristol City, unfortunately. Um, he arrived there in January, as most of you know, after a failed loan at Freiburg. But um, he started one of the last seven games, and that was last night. And he's failed to score assist since February 12th, and he hasn't scored at all since arriving. But on Friday, we'll, we'll start with the earlier game. Um, he was subbed on with 25 minutes to go versus Barnsley. But his ratings didn't really reflect a great performance um, in, in the time that he had on the pitch. His stats didn't either. He made 12 passes but completed no dribbles, made no tackles and created no chances in his time on the pitch, leaving him as one of the lowest rated players on the field, unfortunately. Um, last night in a home loss to Brentford, he started for the first time since February 21st. Um, but he was subbed off after 57 minutes. And you begin to think, maybe is it not working out there either? You know, he, he, he has had starts in a, in, a, in a Bristol City shirt. But in the games I've seen him in, and you know, I, I was stress again, I don't watch every game, I don't watch every minute of every game, but you know, in the games I've seen him in, he, he hasn't been that effective and he, he hasn't looked like the breath of fresh air that we've seen him when he's on the ball in a Liverpool shirt, you know, we've seen him in a lot of pre-season games in a Liverpool shirt, not many competitive games granted, but you know, in the instances where we've seen him in a Liverpool shirt, he, he does always appear to have a sharpness about him and, and yeah, like I say, a breath of fresh air element about him, but he doesn't really seem to have that in, at these teams that he's been on loan with and I'm not sure what the deal is there. Maybe he's not being used correctly as he wanted to. You know, I remember him playing central one time for um, Bristol against Bolton where, where I thought he was more of a winger. I feel like he's more of a winger. Um, maybe he feels like he's more of a winger, but he seems to be playing a lot more wide. Um, for example, last night he started on the wing, so I don't really know what the deal with that is really. All we can do is hope that he can play himself into a little bit of form with the minutes that he has and, and maybe towards the end of the season he will start getting more minutes and more starts as Bristol, don't forget, are pushing for a playoff place. Um, they're pushing for promotion to the Premier League and, and it'd be really good if he could be involved in a team getting promoted to the Premiership. That would be a really, really good experience for him, but we'll see how it goes. Right back, John Flanagan didn't cover himself in any glory as Bolton lost 2-1 to Leeds. Um, he could have done a lot better for their second goal. I've seen the highlights for this one. It's sort of a muddle up. He's really shabby defended it kind of there's kind of a mix up in the box trying really hard to remember it quite vividly now but the ball comes in as far as I'm aware and then the, I think the keeper comes and misses it and then it comes off Flanagan's back and the, I can't I can't exactly remember now but trust me he, he could have done better he didn't cover himself in glory as another note though um, a few comments in the last episode about 10 days ago um, claimed that nobody cares about John Flanagan anymore which I, I can completely understand given given what's happened this year and, and given that he probably doesn't have a future at Liverpool I do bring you updates on him purely because he's one of the more well-known Liverpool low knees and I think some people may be interested in but it's really curious that a couple of comments are saying that, that nobody cares and a couple of comments even said to stop reporting on him so I'm going to leave up to you guys. Um, up here there's going to be a poll and you can decide basically whether you give a shit about John Flanagan. It's completely up to you. If, if, if most people vote no, I'll stop the updates. Nobody cares. Doesn't have a future at Liverpool. But if people vote yes, I'll keep talking about him for the weeks to come from now until the end of the season. Daniel Sturridge is edging closer to a return from injury for West Brom. Um, obviously Alan Pardew got sacked yesterday. The manager who signed him. So that's going to be a, a manager will merry go round going down there. They're going down anyway. Let's be honest. Whether whether he returns, he could return and play himself into the form of his life between now and the end of the season, and he would def they would definitely still go down, and he definitely won't be at West Brom next season. Probably won't be at Liverpool next season either, let's be perfectly honest. Um, he was supposed to play on Saturday in the 2-1 loss to Burnley, but in true Daniel Sturridge style, didn't make it in time. Um, in fact, it was revealed this week that since January, he's cost West Brom £50,000 per minute of time on the pitch, uh, which I think is absolutely hilarious, to be honest. If I've ever heard a stat that sums up Daniel Sturridge more, that's it. Divock Origi was once again on the bench for Wolfsburg as they drew 0-0 with Hertha Berlin. Um, he was introduced with seven minutes to go. Not really much of an opportunity to make such an impact there. It was a it was a very drab game, really. Nothing much happened. It's looking really, really bleak for him there in terms of you know his future, in terms of him being there this season. You know he can probably take comfort in the fact that there's only a few more games before he'll be flying back to Liverpool and discussing his future with the Liverpool bosses and Jurgen Klopp, etc., etc. So you know it's looking bleak for him there, but hopefully. And all alone will be tried for him next season. I've been I've been critical of Divock Origi in the, in the in recent weeks because he did start very well at Wolfsburg and he really has tailed off. But you know, and I even think I said in one week that 
I would sell him. I, I'm not quite sure I would sell him at the moment just because of the lack of options we have. But if we bring in a Timo Werner, I think he's fucked, to be perfectly honest, because you know that's just a level above what he's doing at the moment, especially with the Naby Keita connection that... Um, that, that Werner has at Leipzig with Keita coming to Liverpool and, and that is a lovely transition into Naby Keita. Um, he got booked but overall had a really, really good game for RB Leipzig as they beat Hanover 3-2 away from home. Um, he grabbed yet another assist in a remarkable campaign so far for him. Um, that was for their second goal. He had an incredible 86% pass completion rate and yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a drill. Keita countdown this week, 90 days. 90 days until Naby Keita is officially a Liverpool player, puts on that Liverpool shirt for the first time. We are into double figures, ladies and gentlemen. The shit is getting real. Harry Wilson had an off day for Hull City as they drew 0-0 with Aston Villa on Saturday. Now, I did watch a bit of this because it was on Sky Sports at the same time as the Everton Man City game. And obviously, Everton fucked that up really early on, so it was very, very uninteresting when it came to half-time. So I watched a bit of that game because I knew Harry Wilson was on the pitch. Yeah, he did have a bit of an off day, and this has been reported by the Hull Daily Mail, who, by the way, if anybody from the Hull Daily Mail is watching, you have been stars throughout this entire process because I can just come to you guys every week, get a little bit of a sense of how Harry Wilson's playing absolutely top-notch guys they said that nothing would fall right for him and that Villa defender Axel Twan Zebe who I believe is a Man United loney um, did a good job of frustrating him until he was subbed off with 30 minutes to go um, he's expected to start again today they play Wolves away from home really tough game obviously Wolves top of the championship got some really really talented players so it'll be interesting to see how he does against them and finally on to the main event which is Marco Gruwich at Cardiff I'm telling you everybody bloody loves him he's like a revelation the best thing to happen to them since sheep. No, I'm joking. Um, the Blue Herd's good run of form since his arrival into the team has been no coincidence, trust me. They are unbeaten in the 11 championship games in which he's played. The only game he's lost is in the Cup to Manchester City um, earlier in February. Was it? Yeah, must have been February. Um, he's getting an average rating um, of 7.4 per game from whoscored.com. Um, he was influential again as they beat Burton Album at the weekend 3-1. I think that was on Good Friday. Last night in the one-all draw at Sheffield United, he wasn't as good, but he's been really good, really promising overall. If they've not been on already, I'll get some stats on the screen for you because it, it really does show how good of a midfield player he can be. And I'm wondering really whether he can be in Jurgen Klopp's plans next season, you know, but never a good thing about this. Emre Chan's probably leaving. And in terms of powerhouse midfield players, Grouch is proving that he can do it. Now, obviously, he's in the Championship. The Championship is a very good league for, for a second tier but it's still a second tier. The Premier League is a massive jump up. And I think that before we can really claim that he's got the potential to be an Emre Chan replacement, we need to see him do it in the Premier League as well. And, and that's why next season, even though it would be really, really good. And look, it's, I'm not ruling it out. He could be part of Jurgen Klopp's plans next season. I, I could, I could see it happening, it's certainly plausible. But I think for me, the best course of action would be to give him another loan next season to Cardiff, hopefully. If they come up, the second look, the second of the championship now, I think they're eight points clear of third. So the real favourites for an automatic playoff spot. And I just think if Cardiff come up, he's obviously doing really well there. He's playing well under Neil Warnock. He'll probably stay in charge there if they come up. And he can get some Premier League experience at the same club where all the fans know him and love him. He's playing in the middle of a midfield three, um, more defensive. And yeah, just overall, I think that would, that would help him more. I mean, the best example of it is look at Danny Ward. Danny Ward goes off, had a great season on loan at Huddersfield last season, got them promoted to the Premier League, saved penalties in the blinking shootout that got them promoted against Sheffield Wednesday, and then suddenly the loan to send him back is denied. He's rotting in the Liverpool reserves. He's playing for the under-23s every now and then. And, you know, it's been a very static season for him in terms of progression. Now, I know that goalkeepers and midfielders are different. I know you play more midfielders when you play a game of football, you know, traditionally and I know that Liverpool's goalkeeping you know we pretty much settled on Carrick being our number one but it's not like we've got a De Gea in goal and he's the best goalkeeper ever to walk the earth you know he's, he's playing pretty good at the moment but I for one am surprised that Danny Ward hasn't had more opportunities this season and I worry about it being the same for Marco Gerich next season if indeed he doesn't go back out on low and I just think that's the best way for players to develop at this age go out Get 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 some experience for with a Premier League, uh, with a newly promoted Premier League club such as Cardiff next season if they come up you know and look, and look, and have the experience of of fighting for survival in the Premier League as well as competing for top four and trophies you know that real dog fight that real physical you know one of those clubs that just needs to fight tooth and nails to stay in the division you know if he has a season fighting for that he'll know how to fight for when it comes to later on his career and he's competing for top trophies with Liverpool and I just think hopefully that is the case hopefully that's the the course of action that Jurgen Klopp will take next season because I, 
I hope that he learns from the Danny Ward thing and go, yeah, you know what, these players actually do need a loan. So we'll wait and see. But yeah, there is your update on the loans, ladies and gentlemen, for this week. We're going to move on to the youth side. And to be fair, there isn't much to report here. They've been on international break too. And Neil Critchley's side haven't actually played since March 21st when they lost away to Middlesbrough. I watched that game. That was the Adam Bogdan game. I don't know why Adam Bogdan played, but he did. I suppose they're just trying to justify paying him some money because he hasn't played for Liverpool for God knows how long. They're back in action at home to Arsenal on Friday, which will be on LFC TV, it's at Prenton Park. I might see if I can get down for it. I'm, I'm commuting sort of from home at the moment because I'm on Easter break off university, blah, blah, blah. But with three games to go, it's still perfectly possible for them to win the league. Um, but the clash on Friday with Arsenal is massive if they are to do so. It's a couple of days since I've written this agenda and I can't remember the exact thing, but Arsenal are above them in the league by a point, I think. I think Arsenal are ahead of them and I think if Arsenal win on Friday, um, that's probably them out of the title race, which is unfortunate because they've led the league for a lot of this season. I feel really bad for Neil because a lot of the, his top players have been taken away from him and, and as a result of that, they've been knocked off the top of the table. But the other two games are against Everton and Chelsea, so um, there's no let up there. There are no walks in the park either. He's got a big Merseyside derby coming up to think about. He's obviously just lost to Man United recently, just as the first team have. Um, but he'll want to put that right by winning the local derby against Everton. So let's wait and see. Meanwhile, Steven Gerrard's under-18 side got beaten 3-1 away at Newcastle on Saturday. Again, a lot of youthful players that we don't really know about have been playing for the under-18s, and, and that's fair enough. I think over the summer, a lot of under-16s or whatever age will be promoted and will suddenly learn a lot more about, um, about the players that are playing on the Gerrard squad. Once officially promoted, we can learn a bit more about them. We can watch the highlights of these games you know and, and there's probably a few players in there that will burst onto the scene just like your, your Curtis Joneses and your, your Adam Lewis's have this season I think um, there'll probably be a few hidden gems in there um, young schoolboy Fidel O'Rourke um, got the consolation goal and, and Gerard basically said that it was a tough morning afterwards said they were second bets all over the pitch but yeah that is it ladies and gentlemen for this week for the development watch thank you very very much for watching um, as always like the video subscribe to the channel leave me a comment below for me to read tell me if you give a shit about John Flanagan follow me on Twitter at bkelly776 i will be back next week with more development watch ahead of the massive second leg against manchester city i'm so nervous for tomorrow night but so excited at the same time can't wait to greet that bus can't wait to get in the ground and sing walk on